Alrighty guys, yes, it's the same day. Yes, it's the next minute after completing part one. I want to briefly talk about part two of my testimony. So I um, alluded to my cancer coming back after beating cancer, after being delivered um, from the spirit of death, spirit of infirmity, I cast and bind it. I was delivered. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I would only have days to live. They said even if I lived, I wouldn't be able to talk. They said even if I talk, my voice would not sound the same. They said my legs, I can't feel my legs. I will never walk again. Even if I walk, it will be with braces. I'm walking without braces. They said um, my lung, my heart capacity won't be the same. My heart capacity is back to 99%. My lung capacity is back to 100%. I still have a stent in my lung, yes, but I used to go every week to every month to every six months. Now I'm down to one year. Have not been to the doctor since last year. Just, I'm just, they said, but God said and did. Okay? They said, but God said and did. Period. Okay? So, fast forward, I beat cancer. Beat cancer. Living my life like it's golden. I'm going out. I'm partying. I'm happy. You know, I've been bed bound. I've been in the house for a year. Like, literally not being able to walk, eat, talk, do things. Like, I'm like, God, like, I'm happy. But, like, I need to experience the world. Like, God is good. I didn't tell nobody my testimony out of fear. Um, I am Nigerian. And for some reason, like, in our culture, it's shameful to just tell people what you're going through it's shameful to be vulnerable and I really hate that about our culture it's really hard to be open and share aspects of our life like and I, I regret to this day not sharing my testimony right when I beat cancer because literally literally a month after being delivered from everything a family friend of mine died of cancer same age as me and for a long time it was really hard for me to rationalize this because for a long time it was why me and not him why did I get to live why am I still here he also beat cancer but then it came back times 10 it came back worse to where he um needed hospice and he passed away and I just felt this enormous amount of guilt like what am I here for how come he didn't make it and um again God doesn't give us cancer but he does have the power to deliver us from any illness period and um yeah, so my mindset at the time was, maybe I don't deserve to be here. Started remembering me on the bed, hyperventilating, about to give up on life. Like, maybe I was meant to die. So I was really afraid to share what God had done in my life because, again, someone who was popular in our community had just passed away from cancer. And I just felt like it wasn't fair for me to testify something that, was amazing to me but wasn't amazing for their family um so yeah I fell back into sin lying I mean yeah like going to the club I've never been a promiscuous person so that's just something that never I never struggle with I did date but um I've never really been a promiscuous person I used to joke and say I was a sexual demisexual um, because, yeah, that's just not something I really struggle with. But I will admit, like, I was, um, um, yeah, I was going to the club. Um, I, I wasn't really doing drugs. I wasn't doing marijuana or anything. That was another thing that I wasn't really bit fond of. But, you know, just worldly things, like going back to listen to trap music and, you know, eating things I wasn't supposed to eat that wasn't good for my body, like, just pretty much going back to the way I used to live. <laughs> and so in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm not a fornicator. I don't do drugs. I don't, I'm just going to the club. I just listen to music. Like, 
I am just living my life. Like, I'm 23. Like, I'm young. Like, like let me do me, you know? And um, I went, I think I turned 24. I celebrated it in Atlanta. Um, that year, we I traveled. My friend, um, it was her birthday. We went to Vegas, gambled, <laughs> drank. Um, but yeah, long story short, um, I went back into the world. Um, I still felt, you know, I still was praying, still was reading the word, but gradually, gradually, I was drifting away from God. And, um, fast forward, uh, I just knew being with my ex or my boyfriend at the time wasn't something God wanted me to be, do. Again, I will tell my full testimony of my life, what I experienced in that relationship, but it was time for me to end that relationship. I didn't want to end it because he had been with me through the cancer. I eventually told him about the cancer. He was there with me. Um, he saw me at my worst. And I just realized it was just a lot of trauma bonding. Um, and he was, like, you know, I just felt like nobody else would want me after what I've been through. Again, the Nigerian community is so judgmental. It's really hard for people to be vulnerable. And I felt like nobody would want me. Um, he would tell me things that his family thought of me and so on and so forth. And I just knew that wasn't the type of family, the type of env environment I wanted to be in. I didn't want to marry in that type of family. So I ended up breaking it off with him. I just felt like God was wanting me to remove certain things in my life. I ended it with him. Um, obviously, you know how some men are. They will constantly come back, constantly ask for another chance. And I would entertain it sometimes, but then sometimes I'd be like, eh, no, I need to come back to God. It was like a battle. It was an ongoing battle. Finally, um, I want to say February 2019. His birthday is in February. Um, I felt heavy again. I felt that feeling of what am I doing with my life? What am I doing God just did this for me and this is how I repay him. Just enormous amount of guilt. And I remember just being led to fast. I fasted for the entire month of February. I said, God, remove those from my life that you don't want in my life. Remove anything from my life you don't want in my life. I remember praying, fasting. Um, I remember Valentine's came up. And because his birthday is in February, um, we would just like celebrate it all at once. He drove from Dallas to Houston to visit me, begged that we spent Valentine's together, although we weren't together. And again, how the devil works, I'm like, yeah, there's Valentine's, like I don't have a date, I'm fasting, but you know, like I, I was head on strong about not doing anything sexual, kissing of the sort, it was just gonna be a date, quality time, whatever. Drove from Dallas to visit me, um, picked me up from work. We had a spa day. We had went got dinner from my favorite restaurant. Like things that I was begging this boy to do, things that I've been begging him to do for the longest. That's the day he wanted to do everything because he knew I didn't want him anymore. He knew it was over. I even as he was doing all these things that I liked, it was annoying me. It repulsed me. It angered me. I was disgusted, and I knew like. I knew this is the end of that season. Like that, that I knew that was the last day. Like I just knew it was over. I knew it was over. Let me not say the last day because we did see, we have mutual friends so we see each other. Um, but I knew like, I just knew anything romantic was, was like I just didn't want to be with him anymore. Um, again, I'll go into more detail, but after that day, continue my fast, continue praying. Um, and yeah, I just started being more intentional with dating and my life. Um, with when it came to school, I went back to school to finish my nutrition education. I reapplied for. I didn't tell you guys, but my undergrad uh, degree was uh, exercise science and fitness management to become a physical therapist. So I was pre physical therapy, exercise science management degree. Um, I applied the. I applied that year. Um, I was always afraid to apply because I didn't think I would get in. Mustered up the courage to apply, spent money on my essays. Um, I only applied to one school. 
um just you know like i just felt the need to just better like i just felt the need to align myself with the path god wanted me to take so i just cut off everything that just wasn't aligning in that way for me um i was dating but i let it be known and i've always been like this i don't believe in um having sex early before marriage um i believe in fasting and if you want to be with me we have to fast and pray before we start this relationship some dudes called me weird some dudes said um they were they appreciated my me being upfront, but that you know they're not gonna go ahead with the relationship and there was only one guy who um in the past I, there was another guy in the past i've had men be okay with that but anyways um there was one guy who was okay with fasting with me praying with me and he is now my current boyfriend um whew, that's another testimony in its own but um yeah so now my current boyfriend um so yeah 2019 was a year of remove was rem the year of removal and renewal so a lot of things left in my life 2019 and a lot of new things came in my life 2019 so i applied i told you i applied to one school one pt school didn't get in didn't let that discourage me um i waited for the next cycle re uh reworked my essay i had one of my really close uh, my best friend's brother help me with my essay i applied to like 13 schools the next cycle save money um i got into three or four schools and all of them had interviews i was um my breath my boyfriend and i because he also got into a program that he's been wanting to get into we would practice for interviewings god was working through my life long story short god was working through my life I get, I get into PT school, physical therapy school, 2020. Literally right smack dab when COVID starts. Like I started May 2020. May 2020, I start PT school. And stress beyond, like, I, like stress. Like any, I mean, 2020, like we're all, it's 2023, so we're all living and we can testify that 2020 was not an easy year for most of us. Um, I was at peace. I liked how quiet the world was. But in terms of like my personal life with school and money, and it was stressful. And I'm learning that I don't do well with stress. I mean, God said to cast all your cares onto the Lord. That's something I have to remind myself with every day. But at the time, it was just very hard for me. A very hard concept for me to, to grasp. 2020 was so hard, y'all. 2020 was so hard this is what i beat cancer 2018 um this is two years after you know beating cancer and um i still had my uh by by uh annual checkups i still had my other checkups with like you know my bronc and all that other stuff but um i still had to do checkups where they had to make sure that cancer didn't come back you do that for the first five years um, and at this time I had to go, I think, was it three times a year? Yeah, three times a year. So it was more than by, it was try. <laughs> but, um, anyways, um, at this point, my bronc, instead of me going every month, like I used to, I remember, um, praying, being in a trance and God told me to tell them to change the size of my, my stent. God told me that my stent was too small which is why I had to go every month because the stint was too small. I remember telling the doctors and they were looking at me like, don't tell me to do my job. But I told them, please change the size of my stint. God told me to tell you to change the size of my stint. Lo and behold, they changed the size of my stint. I mean, I still cough here and there, but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. To the point where, yeah, I only get my stint it went from like i said in my last video and early on once a month to twice a year to now it's once a year um and honestly i feel like i could go longer than that but i don't i don't want to push it okay i don't want to push it um anyway so now it's 2020 i'm stressed out about school 
I'm doing, I'm in my doctoral program. There's a lot at stake. You know, like I'm stressed. You, we started the program at home because of COVID. Um, and then it got to a point where our school said you had to be in Austin. Um, so money. Oh my gosh. Even prior to getting into physical therapy. Oh my gosh. I, I was about to not get in because of money. My loans weren't being approved. I don't have credit. My parents' credit was bad. I had to use my aunt. Long story short, I get into PT school. It's hard. It's stressful. Um, my first semester, I had to drop a class because I just couldn't. I didn't have the capacity to take seven doctoral level classes, um, handle my health and um, finances. I just couldn't do all of that at the same time. So I dropped a class and was able to maintain my standing in the program. But then again, with time, I started feeling weird. Um, weird in the sense of, of worry not really physically weird but just worry and I was afraid to go to the hospital I mean I still am if I will be honest with you but not as much as you know right after getting cancer um I remember it being September 2020 um right before my birthday it was time for my checkup my tri-annual checkup and um, they did the scans, blood work, all the stuff that they always do. And I remember them telling me to um, brace myself. They started asking specific questions and my gut, my stomach just fell. And I just was like, they're about to tell me something bad. I can feel it. Um, finally, the doctor was like, you know, we looked at your scans and we're afraid that the cancer might have come back we see a huge tumor in your stomach the size of a tennis ball the size of a tennis ball they said I have a tumor the size of a tennis ball that um, biopsy is going to be required they don't know if it's lymphoma it might be the same cancer it might be a different cancer but there's a tumor the size of a tennis ball in my stomach I'm in the middle of PT school. Y'all, like, it just, I don't know. It really broke me. Um, part one, I did talk about the lump in my breast. Um, I didn't tell you how I overcame that as well. Um, pretty much, um, it came back benign. It came back benign. I thank God for that. I also had a lump in my armpit. <laughs> so the same lump and my breast and my armpit, they pretty much were the same. It wasn't, it's called an adrenal. Anyway, it's a fibrosis type of tumor. It's benign, thank God. Um, I It was optional if I wanted to remove it or not. I did remove the one in my armpit because it was very big. So I removed the one in my armpit. Anyway, fast forward. So the tumor in my stomach, um, yeah, I was distraught. I was devastated. Um, I remember going back to my boyfriend, my current boyfriend, telling him the news, telling my family, and just being sad. It was like a week before my birthday. I didn't know, again, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to process that. Um, my boyfriend cheered me up by, at this time, he also got into his program in Florida. He flew me to Florida so that we could spend time together. Um, also celebrate my birthday. Um, at this point, like, I think I took a break. Was it, I think it was, I think school had just started. So it was early in the semester to where, you know, I wasn't afraid of missing classes or missing schoolwork. Like, at this point, I was thinking about my health. I didn't really care about school at this point, to be honest with you. Um, I was with my boyfriend and we would cry. We would cry. We would cry. We cried together. He held me tight and we cried together we prayed he was like God is not gonna take you away from me we prayed and we cried we cried and we prayed um so the doctor gave me two options uh during my biopsy for some reason the anesthesiologist was stuck on the elevator again the devil just don't 
let me just tell you how the door works. The, the doctor was stuck on the elevator. So because um, there were other people after me, the only option I had was to undergo the biopsy awake. They just literally put local um, numbing through my back to get to my stomach where the tumor was. So I was awake during that biopsy on the table crying. It was so, I could feel, it's a thick needle, you know, it's, it's a needle to where, you know, it has to puncture your body, like go through your body, but thick enough to suck some of the tumor back in order for them to read, you know, to um, diagnose the like whatever um, cancer it, it was. So I was awake on the table crying while they were doing this biopsy. And I just remember praying the whole time, like, God, not again. You told me I was healed. You said I would live to testify the goodness of your works in the land of the living. God, not again. I just remember crying on that table, like, not again. And the weird thing is, even though I knew they were going to give me bad news, I did not feel sick. I did not feel like I had cancer. When I had lymphoma, I knew something was wrong. Like I told you all in the beginning, I had chest pain. I had no symptoms of cancer other than, um, I mean, there were signs like physical, like my hair. That's one thing I noticed with both cancers. My hair was very brittle. Outside of the chemo, before even starting chemo, my hair was very brittle. Um, my nails, like I, your body will tell you something's wrong with you, but in terms of like, me feeling like I had cancer, I didn't feel like I had cancer. So it was really hard for me to fathom what they were telling me because I didn't feel sick. Um, anyways, did the biopsy, results came back inconclusive. They didn't know what kind of cancer it was. They just, they were like, the tumor's there, but they didn't know what kind of cancer it was. And so, um, plan B. They said that I had two options. They were either going to cut my stomach in half um to where you know they were able to open it see the tumor uh cut most of it out and like do tests on it to determine what it was but you know ultimately remove the tumor because they didn't think um it was spreading as fast as the lymphoma or they went through laryngoscopically like where they would cut little they would have little incisions and go it go and remove the tumor that way so the downside was if i went through the little uh if i went through the cuts if i chose the option with the small cuts and they weren't able to get all the tumor out or if they're not able to determine what it was they would eventually have to cut my stomach in half and do it that way as well so it's like i was like uh, do i want the option of cutting my stomach in half and just getting it over with or do I want to choose to do the little incisions have little scars and you know hope for you know hopefully that does it or maybe I might have little scars and have my stomach cut like I was just like what do I do what do I do y'all I guess what I did guess what I did I'll show y'all <laughs> I chose the uh, option of, I have four. I chose the option of having the four incisions on my body. And um, yeah, chose the option of having four incisions. And prior to making this decision, you guys, um, I fasted, prayed, my boyfriend fasted, prayed, my family fasted. Pray and I said, God, I need a miracle. I beat cancer once. I don't want to go through it again. I need a miracle. And I, I this is just going to add to my testimony. At this time, again, only close friends and family knew about the cancer. I hadn't, you know, told the world of the testimony. I was like, this is going to add to my testimony. Like, I'm not going through cancer again. <clears throat> While they do the surgery, I'm going to choose the small incisions. And I need good news after that. God, I need good news after that. Like, I was fed up. I was like, God, in your word, you said if it's your will, 
and if it aligns with your will, that prayers may be answered. Just the faith of a mustard seed can move mountains. And I was like, God, I'm believing you. Heal me. I, I can't go through it again. What happened, y'all? I went through that surgery. Put me to sleep like they always do. At this point, I've been put to sleep so many times because of my bronch. Um, the bronch I have to do often or then as often as I did then. But anyways, they put me to sleep. I wake up ready to hear good news like i'm just like i don't care what y'all are telling me even if it is bad news i know ultimately it will be good news in the end period in jesus name amen i wake up it's a female doctor she was my gastro oncologist she comes in the room and she's like i have good news immediately i'm just like god hey, hey my god he's good she comes in the room and she's like so in the midst of the procedure, um, they did the larynx, their laryngoscopy or whatever. They made the incisions in my body. And as they were performing on me, the tumor disappeared. I am not making this up, you guys. What? It, why would I make it up? Why would I lie? The tumor disappeared. The tumor disappeared. The tumor disappeared. The tumor disappeared. It's gone. It vanished. I did more scans. Gone. Didn't show up in my scans. Literally nothing. Like, obviously, I had to take um, a, a leave. A, I requested um, for my school that I took a break and a leave for health reasons. So, the tumor was gone. I was healed. And since 2020, I have to keep going back. I've been back to get my scans. I've been healed. It's been gone. And I've been continued. To, I will continue to be healed. And I see my battery flashing. So I will hurry up and end this testimony. Whatever you're going through, give it to God in prayer. Leave it to him in prayer. I was so afraid to share this testimony. I am at my fifth year mark of beating cancer. My favorite song, my favorite gospel song says, somebody told me we overcome through our testimonies. You wouldn't believe how that fear used to paralyze me, but God's hand put me through the test and he brought out the very best in me. Now I'll never forget. Wow, the battery literally died while I was telling y'all my favorite song lyrics. But anyways, now I'll never forget to tell the world what he means to me. I love God. Um, this is my testimony. God healed me from what they said may be incurable. God healed me from something they said would only give me days to live. God healed me from something that they said I wouldn't walk, I wouldn't talk, I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't be myself from. I am able to stand, walk, move, talk. Okay, y'all, y'all, I mean, I've had my channel for a couple of years now. And the only reason, fun fact, the only reason why I started my YouTube channel was because I was going to tell my testimony then. But again, I got so scared. I was so afraid. And now that I'm talking about it, it's like, it's not even that bad. Like, God is so good. I might not post it immediately because it's long. I got, what, almost two hours of footage. So I do have to sit down and edit part one and two. But it's like. God, God is good. The same God of yesterday is the same God today and the same God tomorrow. Jesus performed so many miracles, okay? What, the story of, um, what's her name? Touching the hem of Jesus' cloth, just from her touching and believing she was healed. Someone that was bleeding for years and God healed her in an instant. The same God yesterday is the same God today and the same God tomorrow, okay? Sorry, y'all, just, I was feeling better. God healed me, guys. My scars. Before I go on and ramble, let me just end this testimony with a prayer. God, I thank you for giving me the strength. God, I thank you for giving me the strength to testify the goodness of your works. 
I was crippled by the fear, the spirit of fear. The devil did not want me to share this testimony because I know somebody out there is watching. Somebody out there is watching and is going through something similar where they feel alone. They feel isolated. They feel that they're never going to get out of what they're going through right now. And God, I'm here to tell them today that the same God yesterday is the same God today. The same God that delivered me and healed me from cancer, healed me from a tumor the size of a tennis ball, is the same God that can heal you and deliver you in Jesus' name. God, use me as a point of contact to heal anyone that is going through anything right now. Any illness, any sickness, any mental illness, any mental diseases, anything that is not of you i ask that you remove any entity that is not of you i cast and bind it in the name of jesus christ use me as a point of contact to heal anyone that is needing of your love of your warmth of your grace and your healing father god only you can do these things may you be healed in jesus name may you be healed in jesus name May you be healed in Jesus' name. I want to go to scripture. Isaiah 28, 18 says, Any covenant with death, if you, ex if you feel like you've accepted death in your life, if you feel like you've accepted nothing good is going to come, on, come out of your life, be better out of your life, any covenant you made with death, whether in mind or in tongue, because we know that so a man think it, so he... He is, and the power of life and death is in the tongue. Any covenant you made with death will be dissolved in Jesus' name. And your agreement with Shell, which is the place of death, will not stand in Jesus' name. Isaiah 28, 18. Any covenant with death, any agreement you made with death is null and void. I cancel that contract. I cancel that covenant in the name of Jesus. You will live to testify the goodness of God. The goodness of God's works in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Ooh, forgive us of any sins knowingly and unknowingly we may have committed. Any sins of our ancestors. Any sins of our generation. I cast and bind the spirit of infirmity. Any generational curses and illness. I cast and bind it in the name of Jesus. It will not see anyone that sees this video. It will not touch anyone that watches this video. In Jesus name. I. As a YouTuber you know it's easy for me to be like. Like share um, this video. But if you do feel moved to share this video. Part 1 and part 2. Please feel free to do so. Um, if it's something that. You want to keep to yourself you can also keep to yourself and also refer back to this video to get you hype get you pumped up you know what god did it's not only me youtube has so many people who testify of them being healed of incurable diseases of many mental illnesses of many things i'm not the only person i'm just one of many um but if you do feel moved to share please do um i want to I'm 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 trying to make myself accountable, guys. Like I really want to live for God. I want to do things that are God. And you know, I'll make another video on this, but oftentimes living for God, like the devil has deceived us into thinking that it's boring. Living for God can still be fun. Living for God can still be fr like, you know, happy. And I want to show that through my YouTube channel. I want to be happy. I want to do fun things. I want to live for God. I want to show that you can live for God while still doing fun things, while still being happy, while still being excited for life. Like, don't, I have to tell myself, like, devil, get thee behind me. You're not going to deceive me into obeying you because I think stuff like clubbing and smoking hookah marijuana weed whatever is more fun than living the way of truth living a way that god wants me to live in i just i just want that to be the direction of my channel now um i'll still do clothing hauls but more modest okay i'll still do vlogs but you know showing my life what i do going out hanging with friends just this is a new chapter for me and i'm excited um, and I hope you join on on the ride. I hope you subscribe. And I hope you guys like what you see. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, 
if you want me to pray for you, put it down in the comment section. If God has healed you and delivered you, testify and put that in the comment section. If you're too shy, like I was, or I have, I have been in the past, email me. Um, my email is in the description box. Um, again, I haven't even told half of what God has done in this season of my life. Um, like I said, with time, with things, you know, as human beings, we forget the things that God has done, but I'm using this as a way to keep myself accountable and to tell, you know, to proclaim just the goodness of God, y'all. Like, I'm just so happy. It's my fifth year anniversary of beating cancer. Um, this year I graduate from physical therapy school. They said I wouldn't walk, but I'm about to be a physical therapist. I'm about to help those who other doctors are saying they can't walk. I'm using the gift that, come on somebody. The alpha and omega, the head and the tail, huh? The same God that brought the Israelites out of Egypt. The same God that gave his only begotten son. God. God, 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 I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you for what you're doing in other people's lives. I thank you for everything you've done. And I thank you for not allowing me to listen to the enemy. Y'all, God did not, God did, he has been begging me to post this testimony for years. The devil did not want me to post this testimony. Even uploading this video was a hassle, but I did it anyway, and I'm grateful. Um, I'm going to edit it. Don't know when I'm going to post this. It is April 25th, but I'm going to post it, period. Um, but yeah, if you watch this long, put a heart. <laughs> put a heart in the comment. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It's Picture Push, y'all. Stay blessed. Be blessed. I love you guys. Bye.